Short rest intervals are inferior for hypertrophy and will quite literally require you to do more sets for maximum gains. So in today's video, I'll explain exactly why while providing some serious examples. Let's first start by briefly discussing the size principle. Mechanical tension is number one. And in order to create a potent stimulus, we need high enough force production on a set per set basis. In other words, the high threshold motor units must be turned on, which can be quickly achieved by using a high percentage of your one rep max or a low percentage by doing a lot of reps. So as you get more tired, you're going from the low threshold motor units, which are least important for hypertrophy, to larger and larger, all the way to the high threshold motor units. So the common denominator for growth being high effort as we get close to failure. This is why evidence-based strength and bodybuilding coaches typically recommend leaving one to three reps in reserve or going all out. So if you never get to that point, you're actually doing junk volume. That's why not all volume is created equally. The intensity must be factored in. And it also explains why you can gain equal hypertrophy with low versus high percentages, provided that proximity to failure is on point. Makes sense? That's a very basic way of explaining it. Now with that said, let's revisit rest intervals. When you're not recovered from a set, you go into your next one regardless. Basically, you artificially lowered your rest intervals. You don't actually maximally recruit the high threshold motor units because they aren't recovered. So the perception of going to failure is there, which you technically did, but the quality of those sets because force production was lower isn't there. So what do you have to do now? Logically speaking, the answer is simple. Do more sets because you're now compensating. And this, my friends, is exactly what we're seeing in the literature. In 2022, the general consensus is longer rest intervals are better for gaining muscle, which even going back a few years ago, same pattern was being shown. There was an important paper where two groups were compared. The first having one minute rest intervals, the other three minute rest intervals. And it was determined that the one minute group had to perform 50% more sets to get the same stimulus as the three minute group. How crazy is that? Which means that shorter rest intervals don't actually save you time because you're either gonna have to do more sets or more exercises. Now, some of you who did the math might point out that the total duration will still be slightly less, therefore being more efficient. But in truth, it's not because the more sets you do in an under-recovered, burned out state where there's high metabolic stress, the more fatigue is generated, which can impair the net hypertrophy effect. Not to mention the fact that progressive overload is much harder to achieve with the addition of all this extra volume. And to make things even worse, if we drop the rest even further to say 15 to 45 seconds, like what many juice heads like recommend, that 50% could scale differently as you get deeper into the session. No one really knows the precise amounts needed to balance things out. All we have are anecdotes, meaning the recommended weekly volumes can be skewed in the individuals who use super low rest intervals. In fact, don't my explanations perfectly explain what we see in YouTube fitness and even on Instagram? How come there's so many guys doing excessive volume? four, five, six presses in a single session. You swipe right, you swipe again, you keep swiping, it doesn't stop. Well, two things could be going on. Either the influencer is full of shit and they just designed that workout on the spot to give use and they don't actually train that way, which is highly probable, or two, they actually do train that way because they freaking have to. You understand what I'm saying? Rest time is the X factor and the thing is, you don't have to train like most bodybuilders. You can get similar, if not better results by doing less exercises and less volume if you just listen to your body because don't you dare lie to me now. If you took that extra minute or two of rest, you'd come back in stronger. So if you would just do that, you'd break your head way less. And that's all I'm trying to say. Not that low rest doesn't work because let's keep it real. Many lifters do prefer training this way. They don't wanna wait around and lose their groove, even if they can potentially make a bit more gains. 
at the end of the day, training enjoyment is very important. What allows you to stay consistent in the long run is what you should do. And even when we look at history, many of the best old school bodybuilding legends use lower rest intervals. Like, where do you think I learned about them from? One of my inspirations was Leroy Colbert, who recommended one minute of rest between sets. Experience base. Now, does that mean that Leroy's advice was bad or wrong? No. In fact, he was so ahead of his time because Leroy prescribed six sets of 10. See, at the time, everyone was promoting three by tens for all your compounds and isolations, and his arms had plateaued around 18 to 19 inches at the time. And it was only when he doubled his volume, hint, hint, going back to what I talked about earlier, it's only by doing 50% more. The six sets of 10 method is when those extra two inches were acquired. Apparently, Leroy was the first natural in the world to build 21 inch arms, and it was measured with a steel tape. Now, you could say maybe because he was fluffier, it wasn't accurate, or just the measurement itself might have been slightly off. The point remains, his arms became the biggest when he went from three by 10 to six sets of 10. And I just find that super interesting that years later, we can look at his experience with the science. So that's the distinction when we talk about old school bodybuilders. They didn't do a ton of exercises because they didn't really have access to modern equipment, but the ones they loved, they went hard, and did extra volume. It's as simple as that. Leroy Colbert would do scoop curls, seated barbell curls, and the seated dumbbell alternate curl. All right, that approach is certainly viable. In addition to prisoner style workouts, now we know why they work. You're doing a tremendous amount of sets with lower rest intervals. It ends up equating after you do something like 35 down on the push-ups. Yes, it's terribly inefficient. You're gonna do over 500 reps, but this is not an endurance workout. The proximity to failure is pretty good on most sets, but because the mechanical tension isn't reached per se, you end up doing all kinds of work. Hence surpassing that 50% from earlier, but in the end, did it really matter? Oh, a big point I'll also mention is that Notice how these prisoners don't do AMRAP push-ups. There's a reason for this. They got so darn good at them that the percentage of their one rep max is now too low. See, the evidence indicates that you can build muscle with weights as low as 35%. But if you're in the 20% zone, which is now new research showing, that actually builds less muscle, so you can't equate it when the intensity is a little bit too low, well, it's obviously not gonna work. And that's what we see in some bodyweight workouts or some dumbbell sessions in which the guy has 15 pounds in his freaking hands. You see how everything's coming together? We can draw connections from different training worlds and ultimately realize that low rest intervals are necessary. At the end of the day, they're nothing more than a compensation strategy. You can make your training far more simple Stick to the evidence. Three minutes of rest between sets with maybe some sprinkling in of lower rest for say the muscles of less importance or if you're only trying to maintain. But if you have a legitimate weakness you're trying to improve upon or it's an exercise where you want to leave no stones unturned, really maximize that development, then forget about the time element. Just do what works. And also, this could be slightly different on compounds versus isolations because of the synergy of the muscles working together. The movement patterns, systemic fatigue, and how higher reps on some of these exercises can actually be more fatiguing. So maybe in some cases, sticking to the six to eight rep range has an advantage, even though on paper they should technically be the same. That's what I mean by nuance. Like we can cover so much stuff here, but I really hope that I didn't overly confuse you here today. I just wanted to be objective, make you think a little bit. All right, so besides that little template I gave you earlier, if you do want to increase your volume a bit, I'd recommend no more than three presses and three pulls in an upper body workout, followed by two isolations per major muscle group. So if you did an incline flat and decline bench, maybe even some flies right after, 
you don't need a machine bench press, okay? You did more than enough. So don't fall into the junk volume trap, even if using longer rest intervals. There does come a point where there's diminishing returns. And nine out of 10 times, it's gonna be a lot less than what you think you should be doing. So with that said, hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions and of course, share your feedback with low versus high rest intervals. Let's hear it and I'll talk to you all next time.